Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Cash in the Bag. I am your host, Silver Spoon, joined as always by a man who some people call a hot dog, but I just think he's a cool cat. It's Captain Tibbs. Hot dogs are half off at concessions tonight. Oh, okay. Excellent, Tibbs. Well, of course, we're here tonight, and we are going to start off with a bang because we are starting off tonight with the JWF World Heavyweight Championship match. Of course, we see Scotty Moore making his entrance right now. And, uh, oh, wait. <laughs> oh, oh, that's some ominous shit. It looks like, oh, Blake Tanner coming from behind with a kendo stick, taking down Scotty Moore. Now, of course, Tibbs, I, I mean, last week on JWF War, Scotty Moore liked to boast. He liked to say that, like to say that he was always two steps ahead of Blake Tanner, but I think Blake Tanner was two steps ahead tonight. I think so. I think Scotty Moore's getting a little taste of his own medicine right here. That's right. Blake trying for that early pin. Let me remind you again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a falls count anywhere match, which, I mean, I guess Blake Tanner taking full advantage of. Oh, wait. Scotty Moore grabbing that kendo stick, using it to beat Blake Tanner down. Of course, that's, no. the, that's the danger of bringing a weapon into a match like this, Tibbs. You can always have that weapon used against you. Get the stick back, boy. Get uh, the stick. Okay, well, Blake playing to the crowd before he, I guess, goes back to get the stick. Picking up Scotty Moore, but ooh, Scotty reversing. Tossing Blake. Uh, Blake almost hitting that LED screen that's just, I guess, in the middle of nowhere for no reason. <laughs> It gives it gives the workers a sense of wide open space. Oh, all right. Now let's like see. cattle. Oh, okay. All right. Meanwhile, Blake Tanner coming from behind. Oh, big back suplex from Blake Tanner taking Scotty Moore down, picking him up, and now oh, tossing him into that massive brick tower that's apparently been assembled in the arena. <laughs> oh, Blake reversing, oh. getting a quick roll up. One. Oh, Scotty Moore kicking out at one. That brick tower is from the old ironworks. Ah, all right. Meanwhile, it looks like Blake Tanner tossing Scotty. Tossing oh, it looks S like that. He got caught up with on our bright, wonderful LEDs. That's right. Wait, what's Blake Tanner going for here? Scotty Moore giving check. Oh, and they are now in the backstage <laughs> area. <laughs> oh, <laughs> looks like uh, Tim's. Not for, I'm not telling you how to run your backstage, yeah. but there is a logo. For a possibly competing company. Well, you know, it's not a... I don't care what they usually have in their locker sales, but I didn't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Meanwhile, looks like Blake Tanner picking up Scotty Moore. Going over that table. Oh, I think Blake was going for a big move for the table, but Scotty quickly fighting out. It's always about the tables. That's right. Ooh, and a big oh. suplex down onto that wire covering. You know, everything back here, it's going to hurt ten times as much to the bodies of these men. All right. And Actually, I think we pad this a lot better. Okay. Oh, it looks like Scotty was going for a suplex onto that steel chair, but Blake Tanner quickly fighting out, tossing Scotty into the wall. That concrete slamming against the face of the infamous one, and now, oh, sending him straight through that table, and Blake Tanner is revved up, Tibbs. All right, now he's, he's grabbing. doing the circles. Oh, he's going to, oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Big drop kick from Scotty Moore sends Blake Tanner to the ground. Now, of course, Tibbs, I mean, we all know this is false count anywhere, but this is this is ridiculous seeing these boys back here. What's Blake Tan Blake Tanner running away? Oh, Blake Tanner running to grab another weapon, that massive shelving unit. All right, now let's see what he's going for now on Scotty Moore. Oh wait, is he going for it? A big pop of power bomb to uh to of course the son of Scott Moore, the originator of that move. Oh, but Scotty Moore looks to be fighting out. I think he was about to power bomb him through that trash can. I don't think we're allowed to be in this part of the building, guys. <laughs> I don't know if these men care about that, Tibbs, because they are fighting back and forth. I mean, these men reversing everything. They're throwing at one another. And, oh, Blake Tanner dropped out of that hard concrete. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, those are those are opera storage bins. <laughs> That's right. Now Tibbs, I mean, as we saw in the last episode of JWF Monday Night War, we saw Scotty Moore basically kick the big guy Ryback to the curb. Of course, for the longest time, Ryback seemed to be the one advantage that Scotty, ooh, Scotty had over Blake Tanner. But now, now he's all alone. What do you think Scotty's chances are? About the same as the last couple of times, honestly. That's right. Oh, but I, let me tell you something. I think this this backstage area, it's given Scotty a lot more to work with. Because with, as we know, Scotty has, of course, got that vicious mind. And he's using it to his advantage. But it Some looks... say he was the creativator of violence. <laughs> That's right. The creativator of violence, Scotty Moore. Meanwhile, looks like Blake Tanner going through this locker room trying to find a weapon. Oh, it looks like he's grabbed a briefcase. And, oh, slamming. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> slamming it over the face of Scotty Moore. And now, oh, my God, the strength. Oh, but Scotty's slipping out. And, oh, big suplex to Blake Tanner. All right, Tibbs. Now, this is, of course, the JWF locker room, right? We're not in some some other person's locker room, correct? Yep. All right. I, I'm sure you haven't noticed yet due to our oh. wonderful... Oh. Oh. oh, two beautiful super kicks from Blake Tanner taking Scotty Moore to the ground, going for a pin. Shibata running in. One, two... Oh, and a kick out from two at Scotty Moore. Let me tell you something, Tibbs. I thought he had it right there. Yep, I thought Scotty Moore had broken his neck. <laughs> That's right, I mean, it looks like some vicious yeah. stuff going on, but wait, Scotty reversing, ooh, and tossing Blake head first into that, into that cubby hole over there. Watch the cubbies. That's right, meanwhile, Scotty Moore picking Blake, ooh, and it looks like a, a variation on the SMG, that finishing move Scotty is known for, an elevated mm -hmm. SMG. All right, <laughs> toss, tossing him into the cubbies one more time. Yeah, that's really gonna give it to that big man bastard. That's wait, what are you what? Ta what? What are you talking about? Teleportation may or may not be involved. Oh my God, uh, Scotty was going for the SMG again, but it looked like looked like Blake Tanner got out of the way, and it, what the Blake using teleportation to pick <laughs> Scotty up off of the ground and hit a belly to belly suplex. I don't think all these buildings have four walls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, now Scotty Moore with that big, beautiful, almost spinning Samoan drop. Oh, but Blake Tanner fighting out. What's Blake Tanner going? Oh, and Blake is running into the, running back into the hallway. All right. Let's see. Well, I think Blake is just trying to find some more weaponry, but wait a minute. Is that, is that WWE superstar Xavier Woods? Blake or Tibbs, what's what's Blake Tanner doing out there with Xavier? Uh, fucking with Vince's day. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh wait, and now Blake just unloading. Looks like he's dropping a load of fire extinguisher down onto the face of Scotty Moore. That shit's real cold. <laughs> it is. I think he could be freezing, freezing his opponent right now. Dropping the boots down is Blake Tanner. And now, oh, tossing him into that electrical unit. That could have been dangerous, Tibbs. Let me tell you that. Freezing would be a viable strategy, though. Oh, well, not viable anymore. It looks like, looks like the fire extinguisher is out of liquid. So now Blake Tanner is now on the hunt for another mm. weapon. Oh, and he's found another fucking briefcase. Good for you, Blake. Nowhere oh. in the rules does it say that the oh, shoulders wait. have to be attached to a person. I was fixed to say, though, Tibbs, looks like Blake Tanner gave up that briefcase instead <laughs> opting for this steel chair, which he's... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he, he was aiming for Scotty Moore, but Scotty did the smart thing, which was to walk to the left. <laughs> Complete opposite direction. That's right. All right, meanwhile, Blake Tanner picking up Scotty. Oh, I think he was going to... Almost lawn dart Scotty head first into that concrete wall. Now Blake Tanner running back, and it looks like he's got that. Oh my god! Taking that briefcase down onto Scotty Moore. Absolutely vicious, Tibbs. I like that he hit him in the ankle once to destabilize any future attack. <laughs> That's right. I mean, Scotty Moore, if you take out the ankles, you take out a lot of his movement. And as we know, Scotty is, of course, known for those quick feet, that Scotty kick that he has used to take down many an opponent. And ooh, that elevated SMG one more time. And now Scotty playing to the 
non-existent crowd. He is backstage. And a sign for the Royal Rumble on the... And a sign for WWE. Okay, Tibbs, where are we? <laughs> Fucking with Vince's day is what we are. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is not the official JWF arena, I'm assuming. Maybe, maybe not. Some places it is, some places it isn't. Oh, okay. So there's some real teleportation going on. Blake Tanner climbing the top. Oh! Slam it down hard. Looks like he was going to a, for a splash on Scotty Moore, but Scotty Quiglin dodging out of the way. And it looks like that's giving him the opportunity. I don't know what he might be going for on Blake. Oh, but Blake reversing oh. and picking up Scotty once again. Oh, big gut buster from that massive height. And it looks like Blake is going for another weapon. I mean, this has just kind of become the, the, the Blake's playground back here. Uh, oh, wait. What city they're in tonight? Oh, wait a minute. He's dropping <laughs> dropping that chair. And now what's he doing? Oh, he's got the this whole production box. This massive box. And it, Blake looks like he's going. Well, no, he gave up. I think he's been waiting. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Missed. I think he missed a little bit. Oh, no. He missed. <laughs> Tried to go for the BDT, but Scotty quickly jumps over bridges. And now what's he going to go for? Slamming those boots down onto the back of Blake Tanner. Smack, kick, break, neck, uh -huh. ouch. Oh, and a big gut punch. And then send Scotty Moore flying into those boxes, actually falling down onto a steel chair. Now let's see what Blake Tanner's going to go for next. <laughs> Looks like he's actually got that chair wedged between his legs. Wait a minute. No, he can't be. Oh, my God. A BDT. The bee sting out of that chair. Oh, and Scotty Moore kicks out at two. It's a good strategy, though. Tibbs, that might have been one of the most horrifying moves we've ever seen. A, a bee sting that... Elevated move directly onto the skull of Scotty Moore. Now Blake just climbing on the butcher of the box again. And yet, unlike dick kicks, not in the rules. Not my problem. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, assumedly, if we're in a teleportation situation, are any rules legal here? Oh, my God. <laughs> He just tossed Scotty Moore's skull first into the bumper of that car. I think it says VKM on the bumper. What the hell? Oh, wait. Now, Blake, um, I always wanted to go back to the well. Blake Tanner has got another production box. All right. Maybe he could get it to this area this time. <laughs> All right, but wait a minute. It looks like he's... He's almost like an angry bull revving up. Scotty Moore turning around. And, oh. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it did not affect Scotty Moore, the immovable object. <laughs> That's right, Tim. <laughs> oh, and a backbreaker puts Blake down. Tibbs, I got to tell you, I'm thinking... I'm thinking it's a poor strategy from Blake Tanner to keep using these equipment boxes. Not exactly the strongest weapons. <laughs> Never works out for him, does it? <laughs> no, not really. All right, and now, oh my God, Blake crashing. Cranium first, and now Scotty Moore looks to be going after the box, but, well, <laughs> he's not, he's just walking towards the box. I don't know if he's trying to move the box, but the box is... <laughs> oh, wait. Oh! Blake Tanner, I think Blake was trying to stop Scotty from walking towards the box, and Scotty instead replied with a TDT. <laughs> and he's still just walking. <laughs> You know, Tips, I think if he had capitalized on that DDT, Scotty might be JWF World Heavyweight Champion right now. What do you think? I can't not speak. Send <laughs> help. Oh, it's all right, Tips. Meanwhile, Scotty 
Blake is up and moving, and now, oh, now they're both walking towards the box. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they're just both oh, walking God. towards this spot. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Scotty Moore quickly fighting out and now taking Blake Tanner and dragging him. Oh, my God. Sending him, yeah. him first into that. And now picking him up for another elevated SMG. What can Scotty Moore be going for next? Hopefully it does not involve walking towards that <laughs> damn box. All right. Uh, okay. They're like black holes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blake Tanner walking over to this forklift, and he's actually raising the fork. What's he doing? Blake Tanner flying high into the air on this forklift. Scotty Moore just staring at him, and oh, a massive double X handle from the top of the forklift going for the pin one. Two, oh, and a kick out at two from Scotty Moore. All right, and I think Blake Tanner, he's going for it. He's got it. He's got the box. All right, I think. I no. Think, I think after so much, this is it. This is the oh. <laughs> it just got. <laughs> it just pushed Scotty. Into a bunch of fucking like oxygen tanks, I think. Uh oh, but it looks like Scotty Moore is taking advantage of that weird ass shit to go for an SMG. Oh, but Blake Tanner wisely pushing him out of the way, and now Blake Tanner climbing to the top of this not JWF production truck. Um, Tim, should we? Should we blur this? Fucking with Vince, fucking with Vince. All right. Oh, wait, it looks like Scotty Moore's about to be fucking with Blake Tanner, picking him up. Oh, my God, yeah. Scotty, no. I don't, what? <laughs> uh, I think Blake Tanner just used that teleporting power you were talking about, teleported back on top of the truck. Now has picked up Scotty Moore. Oh, my God. <laughs> Flinging Scotty Moore to the ground is Blake Tanner. That... That fall could have killed him. By God, he's been broken in half. And now Blake Tanner, <laughs> a diving knee onto the skull, goes for the pin. One, two, three. And Blake Tanner is still JWF champion. Hey everybody, Captain Tibbs here, Commissioner of the JWF, and I'm here today to tell you about merch.aloadofpurebs.com slash fightboys, where you can find all of your great eight merchandise for the JWF superstars that you love the most. Here we have t-shirts, tumblers, whatever you could want, you, where you can support your favorite superstars. We have things like the Blake Tanner anti-underdog shirt. We have the Captain Tibbs shirt with my beautiful face on it. Something with the JWF logo. Are you a fight boy or a fight girl? Doesn't matter, we got shirts for them both. And of course, my favorite, the Fight Boys Tumbler Glass. You can put anything in it, even Captain Tibbs' special drink. Whatever you want, find it over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com and look for the Fight Boys section. All right, Tibbs, and now we are back for a match that I, I think you personally have got some stakes in. They, they ain't ribeye, they ain't sirloin, but you certainly got some stakes in this match because mm -hmm. it is, of course, for the title that is your namesake, the JWF Captain's Championship. They're Omaha stakes. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly, Tibbs. And these Omaha stakes, they're going to be served with a side of maple syrup because the lumberjack is here. And the Lumberjack is here to take on a man you know all too well, Tibbs. Canada Charlie. Now, of course, I mean, as you know, we've, we've seen the history between you and your estranged son, Canada Charlie, the current JWF Captain's Champion. And so, of course, I know there are some problems between you two. So, so how do you think he's going to fare in this match against the Lumberjack? Well, sometimes, Sills... You have to use the, the tough love as a parent. That's right, and I assume the tough love you're talking about is, of course, this man. this The monster amongst trees, the lumberjack. He is lumberjacked, as he likes to say. Coming out to the ring, 
And of course, as we've seen, I mean, Canada Charlie, he's the man who brought the Lumberjack into this company so many months ago. But of course, after months of abuse at the hands of Charlie, the Lumberjack has finally decided to fight back, which has led to this match for the Captain's Championship. <clears throat> You'll understand this when you're a parent, Sills. I mean, I, I, am, I am unfortunately and popularly, viciously infertile. But I mean, you know, thanks for bringing it up. Anyways. I thought, you, I thought you froze some of it. No, no, no! That was just for this decorative lamp I was making for a college <laughs> arts class. Oh, it's very pretty. I'm glad you brought it. Yeah, that's right. But speaking of bringing it, I can think of one person who's going to have to bring it tonight, and it's this man. The JWF Captain's Champion, mm. Canada Charlotte. Looks like he's actually coming out with a little bit of extra swagger this uh, this this pay-per-view. I mean, he usually comes out dancing and singing, but now he almost looks arrogant playing to the crowd. Do you think it's wise to be arrogant in the face of the Lumberjack? Oh, God. He may have inherited some teleportation powers, too. Look what he's doing to the belt. The belt is kind of just wiggling around on his waist, but it's all right. All right, of course, Canada Charlie, the man who has tried his best to let the JWF universe know how much of a winner he is. But uh, who knows, he may actually come out a loser tonight. What do you think? Tough love, selves. It is, in fact, some tough love. It, it might be the most violent form of tough love possible. I would say it's going to hurt you more than it hurts him, but I've seen the Lumberjack in action. Oh, no, that is not true on this one. <laughs> that is drastically untrue. Mm -hmm. Also, little, little thing you should know, Sills, before you have kids, don't ever do that shit. Ladies and gentlemen, the following match is for the JWF Captain's Championship. In the left corner is the challenger. He is the monster among trees. The Lumberjack! And in the right corner, he is your reigning, defending JWF Captain's Champion. He is the Canadian one, Canada Charlie! Tibbs, and there you go. <clears throat> Handing off the belt is Canada Charlie to our faithful referee, Shibata. I mean, in all honesty, probably the greatest JWF uh, personality is, of course, oh, look at Shibby. Look at oh. that beautiful bastard. He's the best. That's right, and it looks like, look like the Lumberjack just laser focused in his guidance. Oh, well. Charlie ran in and immediately is eating hands. Eating the hands of the Lumberjack. Uh, oh. I, I mean, I, oh my god, Lumberjack actually grabbing Charlie by the throat. And oh, big gut punch sending Car Charlie to the ground. Uh, Tibbs, is this that tough love you were talking about? Because it does look like he's trying to break your boy's neck. Yeah. Instead of tough love, I maybe should have meant... Cruel torture. <laughs> this is, it. It's it, this may be a painful match to watch. Oh, I, Charlie actually fighting back. A couple of shots to the face of the lumberjack. And it looks like he's, well, go. Okay, there we go. Looks like there was a little bit of miscommunication between the two. Oh, but wait, the lumberjack just punched the air so hard it caused Charlie to go down. My God. I forgot that Charlie was. A bad at this. Yeah, he's not the best. He is a pretty rough competitor. Of course, we all remember at the last Cash in the Bag pay-per-view is where Canada Charlie made his debut. Oh, wait. Charlie reversing. Sunset flipping uh, the Lumberjack into a pitting predicament. Oh, but a kick out from one. And I do not think the Lumberjack is happy about that. Tossing Charlie into the turnbuckle. Oh, but Charlie gets that elbow back. Wait, what's Charlie? Oh my God! 
Charlie actually picking up the Lumberjack. Now climbing to the top rope. Uh, Tibbs, I'm telling you, your boy may actually do something here. Of course, he's got that unnatural strength. That's right. He's oh, got my blood. The Lumberjack actually kicking out at two there. Now let's see what he's going for. Candidate Charlie, I, I think he's confused. I, th I think he's kind of terrified to try to try anything else for fear of what the Lumberjack might do. But wait, oh, he's got him. And it looks like he's set up for that Canadian DDT. Picks him up. Oh, slamming him down into the mat is Charlie. And now it looks like he's walking around. I mean, you've got to go for the pin, Charlie. Here it is. One, two. Oh, and a kick out from two. Well, Tibbs, I think that might have been your boy's last hope right there. Yeah, but he is back on his feet. That's right. Oh, wait. What's he doing now? He he's actually oh. removing the turnbuckle. A dastardly move at the hands of Canada. Charlie, you know that's going to cause some extra abuse. Oh, straight to the back of the lumberjack, the lumber back, if you will, that metal ring slamming into that spine of his. And now Charlie actually trying his best to take advantage, trying to slam him in one more time, but wait, the lumberjack actually avoiding him and oh, tossing Charlie to the outside. Oh, Charlie. That's right, I mean, Charlie was doing everything he could. I mean, pulled out all of the stops. I mean, we may not agree with it, but removing the turnbuckle, Hitting that Canadian DDT, he's doing everything he can, but unfortunately the Lumberjack seems to just keep coming back. Tough love, tough love, tough love, tough love. <laughs> it's very tough love. Oh, but that's some tough, tough rib pain right there as he sends him flying into the steel steps. And now, I mean, it looks like Charlie is actually just walking around willing to take the count out victor. Of course he is. Champion's advantage. That's right. Oh, but wait, Charlie actually climbing to the top oh, turnbuckle. He hasn't dragon. noticed. Yeah, he did not notice that, but ooh, he's definitely gonna feel the effects as the Lumberjack slams him to the ground. And now, oh my God, the knee of the Lumberjack going straight to, wait, is that? Th that's familiar music, but I think it's familiar for the Lumberjack. That's not music I don't think that should play in the JWF ring, is that? No. It is! <laughs> Tibbs, what's going on? What do you mean? That's that's Braun Strowman, that dastardly. I know, but I thought Braun Strowman and the Lumberjack, they were the same. Oh wait, Charlie! What? Charlie crawling over, limping that arm over. One, two, oh! And Braun, Lumberjack, Strowman, I don't... No. What are you talking? No, that's the lumberjack. Tibbs, I thought they were, I thought they were the same. I thought, what? How could you think they're the same person? They're completely different. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we just found out. I thought I was seeing double for a minute there. One's from Canada, right. kind of. Oh my God, the lumberjack though, still raining fist down. Oh, looks like he was gonna go for the lumberjack slam, but Canada Charlie quickly fighting out of it. And now what's Charlie doing? Taking the Lumberjack, placing him against the ropes, and now tossing him to the outside is Canada Charlie. Oh my God, what's your boy going for? Jumping out and, oh, big swinging. Oh, a swinging Canadian DDT. Puts the Lumberjack skull into the mat. Let's see that one more time. Two more times, oh. And you know, you know the Lumberjack is gonna be feeling the effects of that, Tibbs. That's some absolutely amazing work from Charlie. Real good hits. That's right, but unfortunately, Lumberjack quickly grabbing Charlie once again and tossing him into the ring and picking him up out of those big, broad shoulders. And now just, oh my God! <laughs> Neck first into the turnbuckle. It's a good thing you didn't do it with that exposed one that uh, Canada Charlie exposed earlier in the match. Yeah, that could be real bad for him. That's right, all right. Bad boy. Charlie ducking out of the way. Oh wait, and a, oh big Maple Leaf Spine Buster putting down the Jack. And now it looks like he's calling for one more Canadian DDT. Let's see what he's gonna go for. All right, got him. All right, this may be it. Picking up the Lumberjack mm -hmm. once again. Let me remind you, Lumberjack has been through one Canadian DDT already, or two technically, that spinning one. And then of course, the uh, that vicious power slam from Braun Strowman. Oh my God! 
And the Lumberjack actually kicks out once again. What can put this man down? Well, I think we might find out. That's right. Charlie climbing to the top rope. He's beckoning for the Lumberjack to make it to his feet. And just, oh my God, a big jumping <coughs> neck breaker from Charlie. Tibbs, let me tell you something. I think your boy is showing some skill in this match. A good bit of skill. He just had to get on his feet. That's right. Well, and remember I'd what it was about. Well, unfortunately, he's back on the ground. And oh. it looks like the Lumberjack is calling for it. The Lumberjack slam. And he's pinned Charlie down. One, two. Oh, my God. Charlie. He's done it. Charlie is actually kicked out of the Lumberjack Slam. But unfortunately, the Lumberjack... Oh! Eating a big European uppercut from Charlie. A Canadian uppercut, if you will. But unfortunately, the Lumberjack still placing him... Oh! Straight to the ground. And now placing his boot straight on the chest of Canada... Oh, no. It's the music of Braun Strowman once again. But I don't see the monster among men. I mean, maybe he's just... Is this just something to taunt? Something just to taunt him? Wait, what the fuck? Charlie, there we go. Charlie finally using it to take advantage and slamming the jack to the ground. Goes for the he, pin. He teleported. Two. Oh, and a kick out from two at, at, from the Lumberjack. I mean, Tibbs, do you think something might be going on between the Lumberjack and Braun Strowman? Braun is, looks like he's trying his best to stop, or stop the Lumberjack from winning this match. I think that Braun may have inadvertently wandered into one of my portals. Ah, oh, well, that would always be a problem. Oh, wait, and speaking of problems, Lumberjack's in a bit of a pickle right now. One, two, ooh, and a kick out from the Lumberjack. And now Canada Charlie actually tossing Jack to the outside. Oh, and a big spear sends him down to the ground. Charlie, what are you doing? Oh, big elbow drop. Now, Tibbs, let me tell you something. I know the JWF Universe, they may not be the biggest fans of him, but Canada Charlie has proven tonight that he is a fighting champion. Mm-hmm. He's doing it like he should, kind of. Well, a little I, bit. Well, Almost. other than the exposed turnbuckles and the possibly buying Braun Strowman. All right, well, now I think Charlie's actually trying to tell the referee to comment with the whole counting him out thing. Mm -hmm because I think Charlie wants to keep this fight going. I think something has changed in Charlie. I mean, earlier in the match, oh no, he's actually, <laughs> he is on his knees begging for mercy from the Lumberjack. But uh, I think the Lumberjack actually having to come out and get Charlie. I mean, Charlie could eat that count out victory and still win. Oh wait, what's he doing now? Taking Charlie and, oh, dropping him face first on the hardest part of the apron, that exposed outside. No, picking him up and drop it, oh my God, dropping Canada Charlie onto his back. All right, Charlie's gonna have to do something. Oh, and that's something right there. That big head scissors taking the Lumberjack down to the ground and now slamming him into the side of the ring. Now Charlie actually rolling back in to stop the count, a wise move, but maybe not the smartest. No, got that advantage, boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Charlie oh. doesn't want that advantage. Now I think Charlie Charlie knows what it means to be a champion, and he's taking control as he hits that, oh, Canadian DDT through the announce table. Let's see it one more time. DDT. And the crowd is chanting, this is awesome. And Tibbs, I could not help but agree. I could not help but notice my receding hairline, so there's that. <laughs> That's right. Do you like my blue suit? It's very nice. It looks good. That's right. Oh, but unfortunately, the Lumberjack immediately getting back to his feet. Oh, wait. But Charlie flip it over. He's got him in that sunset flip pin. One, two, three. He's done it. You could call it theft or you could call it an earned victory, but Canada Charlie is walking out as champion after that roll-up victory. Well, I all mean, right, love tough. Good job. I mean, I won't say it might not have been the bravest of victories. It was definitely a, a theft at the hands of Charlie. I mean, 
Lumberjack was setting up for that big power bomb, but Charlie Quigley fought out. But as we can see here, Charlie has definitely put in mm -hmm. his work in this match. Had good instincts. That's right, and there he is, Tibbs. Your estranged son and the JWF Captain's Champion, Canada Charlie. Good job, buddy. All right, Tibbs, you certainly seem like you mean it. And I'm sure Charlie appreciates every last word of it. No, he doesn't. What's up, guys? Do you like wrestling and not so professional rep? That's not how it goes. Anyways, what's up? We're the, <laughs> <fight> <laughs> We're the fight boys, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, stop. Let's just stop right now. No, We're not no, this is it. This is the promo. It's already started. So, if you want to know the backstory on all of these amazing matches you've been seeing tonight, ladies and gentlemen, check out the Fight Boys podcast. We talk about the JWF, and then we also talk about other random bullshit, like Vince McMahon's D and D, like Vince McMahon's D and D fetish. And sometimes we talk about actual wrestling. No, no, that's Dylan's thing, and then I just kind of zone out on those. God forbid you learn anything about Japanese culture. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Anyways, check us out, guys, because remember, when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life. All right, Tibbs, and it is now time for the main event of the evening, the cash in the bag. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Get him. Hammer man. Right. Hammer man. Hammerman. Oh, oh, and he dabbed. And the Hammerman, the Hammerman has dabbed on everybody. No, so, that's the that's the hammer. That's the hammer. That's the hammer. Dab. The hammer dab. Now, did, Tibbs, I've been told that you specifically went to our merch team to request them make a shirt that says the Hammerman is my favorite wrestler. So. Uh, and uh, immediately realized I have the power of a god in this place. And put him in the damn match. That's right, Zibs. Now, of course, the the dab the dabber man, right here, is of course in the cash in the fuck he's good at dance. And look at him, he's just getting it. I love that boy. That's great. Now, of course, you see behind him the cash in the bag briefcase, which of course gives its owner the opportunity to cash in a match for the JWF Championship whenever they wish. Yeah. I had a great idea. I went and got a painted up briefcase that Blake Tanner smashed into Scotty's head. Oh no. And here he is, oh. the demon H, as he likes to, uh, he apparently also has a Twitter now. But <laughs> uh, this e the evil man who was once known <coughs> as our interviewer, Honeypot. He's actually the demon inhabiting Honeypot. Yes, of course, he, his body has been taken over by this horrifying demon who's of course referred to as H. I believe, didn't you say he was originally known as Shagoth, if I remember correctly? Yeah, no, I'm Shagoth. That's right, and we just shortened it to H because, I mean, it stands for Honeypot and we just hope, we hope we can get the boy out of him. Or the demon out of the boy. Who knows? But God is Perhaps he terrifying. both. God is he terrifying. He is very... That is all the gold that he has stolen. That's the gold he has stolen. He actually told me earlier one of it was made just from gold teeth he had stolen from various enemies across his life. Oh, and his tired eyes show his age. <laughs> that demon is older than mankind itself. <laughs> That's right. Well, Mick Foley's not that old. <laughs> but joining him in this match is, of course, this man... A uh, newcomer from JXT. It is, of course, AJ Steele, who we saw at the Regal Rumble this year and making his official debut earlier this month. And now, holy fuck. Huh. So, you think, I didn't pay for any of that. I was just, can we afford that? Nope. That's gotta be, that has to be from, of course, AJ's Dick Pills. He's, of course, a sponsored athlete and of his uh, special brand of masculinity pills. Do not chill for him. He has not paid us. I'm sorry. I just, I, I was, I was thinking that might be, that may be where the fireworks came from. And of course, there you see the man who's not, whoa, honey, looked like Honeypot <laughs> was trying to get out. 
<laughs> He's so big. That's right. <laughs> the man with the body of steel playing to the crowd right now. And He's I so fucking big. <laughs> That's right. Wait, hold on. Honeypot or, or AJ Steel? Yes. <laughs> okay. There he is. The former JXT champion himself making his official main roster debut tonight. What do you think his chances are? Uh, of winning nil, of getting crushed, yes. All right, well, speaking of JXT superstars, we are, of course, about to see the man, a man who AJ Steele knows all too well, one of his old JXT rivals. It's Mojo Gruff out sporting a brand new t-shirt as Mojo Gruff, a brand new attitude, if you will. He's, of course, the voodoo man from the bayou. And he's known for his high flying, so I gotta say, there's gonna be some high flying coming from him from this match. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I forgot which guy this was. I remember him now. Yes, yes, the voodoo man. The voodoo master, he likes to call himself. And he is out here to spread a little bit of superstition to the JW. I don't believe he's wearing pants. I believe those are painted on. Well, we'll never know, Tibbs, because <laughs> I'm not gonna look close enough. And, of course, him summoning the spirits the spirits of victory before the match and damn he actually looks really kind of dope yep we kind of we need to change that i think this is the <laughs> jwf after all he's gonna get caught up by ring of honor soon enough yeah we don't we want him to bask in their mediocrity and speaking of mediocrity <laughs> it's brunch boy Baron corbin now, he did actually, uh, Tibbs, he came to me last week and did say that he wanted to become the official brunch constable of the JWF. Uh, do you know what that means? Yes. Uh, you see, in um, his day job. <laughs> <laughs> brunch boy's day job, correct. Yes, he's a... Funny man, mask impersonator. <laughs> okay, okay. But of course, and also a professional of the law. That's right, he is. And she, look at him. You know, you'd think when we made him, a, I mean, when he became a bad guy, we would have took away the blonde hair, which of course he dies in a tribute to his tag team partner, Guy Fieri. <laughs> but now that the Brunch Boys have disbanded, I mean, I, I I don't know. I think he's kind of keeping this look just to mock Fietti, if you will. I hear that he takes a trophy from every man he defeats. Yes. And Fietti's it, golden locks are now forever gone to be worn on court. That's right, Tibbs. And, of course, the back of his shirt reminding everybody out there that brunch is for men. But this is not about money. This ain't cash in the brunch. This is cash in the bag. Oh, and of course, here's a man who knows all too well about Cash in the Bag. The uh, winner of last year's Cash in the Bag match, the big papa himself, Scott Moore. Now, Tibbs... Who also paid for his own pyro, by the way. Very nice of him. That, that's right, Tibbs. Now, of course, last year, Scott Moore winning the Cash in the Bag match, but unfortunately losing it to Griffin Clouds in a tag team match at Summerfest, which of course led to Griffin Clouds cashing in on Blake Tanner later that night. I mean, with a man who's a man who's experienced like Scott Moore, how do, how do you think he's going to fare in this match? He's definitely got experience, and that counts for a ton in a match like this. That's right. I mean, this is one of the most vicious matches of all time, and between Honeypot and... All the other representatives. I think Scott Moore may be the only per. Oh uh, no, yeah, he may be the only person in that ring who has got experience in this match. Well, some say that Corbin did in another life. But, <laughs> but you know that's not the real kind. Oh my God! No. And Honeypot oh. immediately taken down Scott Moore, <laughs> and now he's just running wild. Beating the shit out of everybody in the ring. Honeypot oh, has yeah. gone crazy. How he runs. That's right. <laughs> now he's just going after everybody. I'm so scared I'm laughing. That's right. Now beating up Scott Moore once again and oh, slamming the big papa to the ground. And now it looks like he's going after Mojo Gruff and the Hammer Man. 
That's oh, right. and nothing of the of a significance was lost. That's right. Oh, but wait, Scott Moore actually picking up Honeypot, sending him to the ground. Hey, Look. that man has vibranium ankles. <laughs> That's right. All right, meanwhile, on the outside, looks like Brunch Boy Baron taking it to AJ Steele. I mean, you got a seasoned veteran in the form of Brunch Boy Baron kind of showing the ropes to AJ Steele, I'd assume. Meanwhile, oh, big leg drop from Mojo Gruff on the inside of the ring. It's almost like you have three little matches going on all at once, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. That's the best way you can describe it. I mean, as this match goes on, these competitors, they're going to start getting weakened down. You're kind of going to start separating the wheat from the chaff, as it were. Meanwhile, yeah, Brunch Boy. Jeff. Meanwhile, Brunch Boy actually picking up AJ Steele. Looks like he was going to try to ram him into that steel post, but Honeypot. Oh my god, Honeypot actually using the ladder to take people down. <laughs> He's so. Oh my god, but Scott Moore <laughs> taking down Honeypot with that big. Oh my god! In the ring, I don't know if you noticed it, but the Hammer Man actually just suplexed Mojo Gruff onto that steel ladder. And Good. now it looks like now it looks like the Hammer Man is up there and he is reaching for the briefcase, Tibbs. Get it, boy. Oh, but Achieve your dreams. But unfortunately, it looks like Scott oh. Moore. Scott Moore actually teaming up with Brunch Boy. And oh my god, Honeypot has a chair, <laughs> and he is going buck wild. Oh. All right. Meanwhile, Scott Moore on the top rope, but I don't think he realizes Honeypot's right behind him. See, Sills, what you might not know about Honeypot is once he defeats someone, he gains a little bit of their power. <laughs> That's right. And, ooh, looks like he's going to... The next person on that list is Hammer Man. As, oh, my God. The knees to the skull. And now it looks like he's turned his attention to Brunch Boy Baron, grabbing Baron by the throat and picking him up. And, oh, my God, slamming him down onto that steel chair. Oh, he's dead. That's right. And now, I mean, I don't know if Honeypot knows what he's supposed to do in this match. I think he's just reveling in the destruction. Oh, H knows what to do. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like now H. Oh, I don't know if H knows how to handle that. A big brunch of days sending him to the outside. I mean, okay. Br Brunch Boy Baron Corbin actually taking down H. No, you have to say the incantation. He was... Oh, he's getting back up now. That's right. Meanwhile, in the ring, Scott Moore <laughs> doing what he did one year prior. Climbing to the top rung, and he's got the briefcase in hand, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks like he is working fast on getting it down. Oh, but wait, Mojo Gruff climbing up to the other side, and now we have got a battle between these two men on the top of that ladder. Oh, and Scott Moore falling down, and Mojo Gruff getting the getting hold of the briefcase now. Little tip you might not know, but um, this is a wrestling match. <laughs> That's right. Oh, but wait a minute, kind of Brunch Boy actually taking the ladder out from Mojo, and Mojo, oh. I was going to say Mojo was hanging on, but Scott Moore quickly stopped and slams him to the ground, but Honeypot answers back. Meanwhile, on the outside, looks like looks like AJ Steele is actually forming some sort of barricade, some sort of barricade with that steel ladder. Big ladder. That's right, and Honeypot actually just tossing the other ladder down, I guess. Fair enough. That's right, but Scott Moore fighting back. Fighting back against the demon Honeypot. Oh, but the Honeypot has reversed. It is now, so oh my God. The mass of a man like Scott Moore. You got to imagine the strength of Honeypot to be able to toss him across the ring like he just did. Crazy. That's right. Meanwhile, Honeypot taking him down. Meanwhile, on the outside, looks like there's just a three-way battle between the Brunch Boy, AJ, and the Hammer Man. Mm. All right, now it looks like, you know, you'd think they would have put the ladder in a place that was better for the fucking cameras to see, but it's fine. All right, meanwhile, Mojo Gruff taking the brunt of an attack from Honeypot as AJ Steele on the outside grabs another ladder, brings it into the ring. I mean, Tibbs, let me tell you something. After you get rid of the first ladder, 
After you add that first ladder to the ring, every other one becomes just a weapon. Yeah. Or your weapon could become a ladder. <laughs> yes, very much. Meanwhile, it looks like Honeypot going for a powerbomb on Mojo. Oh, but Mojo flips him over onto his back. Now let's see what the big voodoo man from the bayou is going to do now. And big DDT onto Honeypot. Sends the man to the... Oh, Honeypot. Honeypot rolled really quickly, and he is fine now. So I would be afraid if I was in that ring. Oh, but Scott Moore. Scott Moore doesn't look to be afraid as he climbs that ladder once again. I mean, Scott Moore, you got to think he's got to be... He's got to be itching to get that briefcase after not being able to cash it in last year. Yeah, I'd be none too happy about that if that were me. Mm -hmm. All right. Meanwhile, Scott Moore quickly fighting off against Honeypot. And Mojo Gruff just kind of trying to figure out what to do in this ring. All right. AJ Steele. AJ Steele actually falling onto that barricade that he set up. What's Scott Moore doing? Oh, my God. Scott Moore with that big bullfrog splash. Take it out. AJ Steele sending the body of steel through that ladder. That was Which, out. So hard the ladder disintegrated. Exactly. Meanwhile, looks like Honeypot actually taking Scott Moore, tossing him into the corner. And now a brunch boy whipping. Oh, big boot to Honeypot. And now it looks like Brunch Boy. Let me tell you something. If anyone has it, I think Brunch Boy has had Honeypot's number in this match. Oh, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. I think Scott Moore just hit Honeypot so hard that the that the residual <laughs> force caused the other two men to get knocked off their feet. Wow. That's right. Meanwhile, on the outside of the ring, Hammer Man. Hammer Man looks to have taken out both Mojo Gruff and AJ Steele. Oh, wait. Well, what's Honeypot? Oh, my God. Big suplex to Brunch Boy putting Brunch Boy down. Ooh. He's finally gotten the best of everyone in this match at one point. That's right. I mean, I think Honeypot, that's been his quest, just to destroy as many people as he could in this match. But in the ring, Tibbs, I mean, I know you got to be happy about this. The Hammer Man, Hammer Man has got that ladder in. Oh, yeah. no, Honeypot's no. there. Honeypot uh -huh. is there. So, yep, quickly, quickly tossing a Hammer Man into that corner is Honeypot. It's like he teleported. That's right. All right, meanwhile, AJ Steele actually getting tossed into the corner as well. And it now looks like Mojo Gruff and Honeypot going together. Wait, what the Honeypot do when he's taking both men? Oh my God! The force of Honeypot caused the ladder to fall. I think Honeypot almost just took out everyone in this match with that one double choke slam. And he's not even winded. Uh-huh, now he's taking out Mojo Gruff trying to get back into the ring, but Mojo quickly put down by a honeypot who's now looks like i don't know if honeypots i think honeypot looked frustrated that there were two people still standing in the form of brunch boy and scott moore you can hear the ladder breaking under his mighty weight that's right but he's got that briefcase ladies and gentlemen honeypot has the briefcase this could be it but oh no baron corbin fighting back big shots to the bread basket and now What's Brunch Boy going for? Oh, looks like he's going for the mat as they slam them <laughs> both down to the ground. That was a good one. That's right. Meanwhile, what's Hammer Man going for? Looks like he's just kind of staring at Honeypot. <laughs> well, well, I don't know what he was going for, but it certainly did not work out well for him. Honeypot must have froze him with fear. <laughs> That's right. Meanwhile, and ice beans. <laughs> That's right, Tibbs. Oh, but Hammer Man hits a big enziguri, that head kick, sending sending him to the ground. I don't know if Honeypot's going to feel happy about that. Meanwhile, Hammer Man. Oh, well, no. Hammer Man's setting up the ladder, but I think he's trying to go after Honeypot a little bit more. But wait a minute. Brunch Boy's at the top of the ladder. Honeypot's too busy fighting. Oh, my God. And he's done it. Well, I know I said it beforehand, but I think that money, uh, that cash in the bag lunchbox has now become a brunch box. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new cash in the bag, Mr. Cash in the Bag, and he is Brunch Boy Baron Corbin. Tibbs, I mean, I don't think any of us could have predicted this. I, I honestly thought Honeypot, Honeypot was on his way, especially after that double choke slam. Mm -hmm. 
Although the only man that actually get the best of Honey Pot in any major way was old Brunchy. That's right. Oh, big spear from Scott Moore in the middle of that match, but unfortunately that spear wasn't enough. And that's why we now have a Brunch Boy as Mr. Cash in the Bag. We should really change the label on the outside of that briefcase, Tibbs. I bought it from the souvenir stand through the portal. Oh, oh, okay, I understand, Tibbs. Well, Tibbs, let me tell you something. It's been an absolutely exciting night. Uh, we got to see Blake Tanner get some, I would say, some final revenge on Scotty Moore in that vicious match. I mean, who knows? The, on the next episode of JWF War, Scotty Moore may be in a wheelchair after getting tossed off of that 18-wheeler. He threw him from a truck. At speed. That's right. And then, of course, we got to see Canada Charlie sneaking out a victory against the Lumberjack, but something feels like it's not finished between those two, especially with the addition of uh, the addition of Baron, or of not Baron Corbin. I'm sorry, Baron Corbin's our new Cash in the Bag champion. Of course, with the addition of Braun Strowman, who I don't think any of us expected to make an appearance in that match, but I guess he came through one of your mystical portal portals and interfered in that match. I'll explain it all one day. That's right. And then, of course, Tibbs, we got to see the crowning of a new Mr. Cash in the bag in the form of brunch boy Baron Corbin, which you know that, I mean, that's going to draw the ire of a lot of the boys in the back, draw the ire of bananas in pajamas, Guy Fieri. A lot of people are not going to like that that man has that brief clip case, especially Blake Tanner. But if you want to find out what's going to happen next, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to tune in to the Fight Boys podcast, the only place where you can get your official JWF Monday Night War coverage. So make sure to check that out every single week, ladies and gentlemen. But for now, on behalf of Captain Tibbs, I've been Silver Spoon. This has been JWF Cash in the Bag, and we will see you next time.